and we're at 2.30, so whenever you all want to get started. Okay, uh, since we're, we're pretty short on time because we've got a lot of people presenting in this next uh, 45 minutes or an hour, um, so I will just go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to turn on my video so you can see me. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, second annual DHS2 app competition where we have some finalists who will be presenting to you their applications today. We have three finalists in each of our two categories, three web apps and three Android apps. Um, and from each of those categories, you will choose one winner for each category. Uh, and each, fi each finalist will have exactly eight minutes to present their application. Uh, Warning to the finalists that we are tight on time, so I will be cutting you off at exactly eight minutes. I will also give you a two-minute warning, um, but we have to we have to move through the presentations very quickly. So make sure that you're under eight minutes if possible. Uh, they'll have eight minutes to present their application to you, uh, and then we will open a survey at the end of that to vote uh, to choose the winner for each of our two categories. So we'll have all six uh, finalists present, and then we'll have one. Uh, period for voting for your two winners. Um, so please take note of your favorite web app and your favorite Android app from the finalists and have a browser window ready to, to vote. That's to all the um, participants here on this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, and if there's a tie in the voting results, the winner will be the app uh, who made better use of the DHS2 app platform or Android SDK. Uh, just to, in case there's a, a, a tie, uh, that's our, our tiebreaker there. Um, what is at stake here? Uh, I don't know if all the finalists know this actually, but the winner of this uh, app competition, both the web app and the Android app winner, uh, will receive a, uh, the ability to join us at the next in-person web app or Android developer academy uh, when COVID-19 allows. So hopefully, we're hoping in 2021 to have an in-person academy. Um, and that includes travel to that location. So uh, good luck to all of our finalists. Uh, I will start with the web app category uh, and I will go ahead and turn it over to my first finalist. The three, the three web apps here are uh, DataViz by Blue Square, um, a set of scorecard and dashboard uh, apps from Measure PMI and JSI, and then a WordPress DHS2 analytics plugin from HISP Uganda. So with that, I will turn it over to Martin to kick us off with the first DataViz uh, presentation. And reminder to uh, Martin, once you get started, you have eight minutes, exactly. Martin, are you, you able to join us here? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, Martin is with us. Martin, Martin oh, Martin. Is there, but mute, so we can unmute. Yeah, I just updated his permissions. Should be good now. Yep. There is you this are. working now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, so I just had a quick crash. I hope that the next time I share my screen, it won't crash again. <laughs> I hope not. Perfect. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, that's my old crash. So that's okay. Uh, hopefully, we are good. And yeah, I'm doing too. Uh, I'm all ready to go. Let me take a timer on my side just to not. <laughs> oh, you, you, you... I'll give you a two minute warning. Okay, then I, I hopefully I should be good. Uh, okay. Yeah, re ready when you are. Ready when you are. Go for it. Okay, so hi, uh, my name is Martin. I'm from Blue Square. Uh, I'm going to start this from, well, this dashboard that we've all, most of us have seen a lot of time, uh, including in this, uh, this, uh, this week. Uh, and what I want to say is that we, we all know the cost of getting there like those nice looking dashboard with a lot of data collected. We know the, the suite and the, the tears behind getting there into any kind of normal running uh, program to getting to this place where hopefully stakeholders can take like the decision that they need based on this data. Now, even in this good situation, uh, the people that are able to access this are still going to be limited to a relatively small number of people. People that have the right to access the DHS2 platform, that have the skills to use and possibly configure those, those elements by, by themselves. And so what we had at some point, like I think Scott mentioned, is what if we could open this? What if we could give to a much broader audience at minimum access to a subset of the data that the program has generated? What if we could give this access to nurse, to 
donors to actually the people that are targeted by those programs. So the actual in this situation, let's say pregnant women for uh, antenatal care. And so this is something we wanted to, uh, to make happen, especially directly as much as possible from DHS2, having a look at the kind of portal we're seeing here inside DHS2. So this is what DataVis is about. So it's obviously important point, logging into the application from here, showing that this is well really a DHS2-based application. So here we are. This is actually what we call the manager. It's a place inside DHS2 where you can configure everything you want to publish on your upcoming public portal. I have six minutes remaining to get a public portal done from this play version. So hopefully uh, I'll get that done. So what we see here on the left is various elements you can configure. Here we are on the basic one. Let's keep an email so people can contact you. Maybe a currency, a language. We're supporting English and French for now. We are hoping to expand for more. We see that DataVis has already picked up some information from DHS2. Uh, the main org unit seems to be Sierra Leone. The lowest level seems to be called facility. Uh, we want to publish for a specific date. We want to publish a period. Why the idea is there that you want to control what you publish? Maybe the very latest period, it's still being validated. We don't want to get that out to everyone. And maybe the past is not as, in as interesting past, really, let's say, uh, older than 2019. And we get an idea, okay, what the kind of data we have the most, what's the periodicity there? Okay, so far, so good. Uh, we want the portal to start with a homepage. A homepage means having a logo. That's good. Let's start getting a quick one. Hopefully, I put that. So we have the logo of the Ministry of Health in Sierra Leone. We can have a nice background image. I took one from an hospital from Sierra Leone again. We can put some information there. I cheat a bit because eight minutes is short. I put some text that I, I got on the Ministry of Health uh, uh, website. We can even put some information about partners. Ministry of Health in Sierra Leone is supported by GZ, notably. Uh, hopefully, the DHS2 is hopefully supported by the University of Oslo and some links there. Okay, let's save that. Still into this nice application there. We can configure a bit the maps that we want. Uh, this is about maybe the country we're in, but mostly what we want to show on a map. We see here two examples. We can sh show a bit of what facility, what kind of facility are present and what kind of indicator we want to show. Finally, maybe we may want to get a proper team, for example, something that's adequate to the color of Sierra Leone. I'm not good at picking color, so hopefully this is the blue, uh, a blue and a, a green, which is not offending to most eyes. Now that I have a, a small configuration, I'm going to publish the portal. So I'm going to ask database, okay, now that I got someone there that it's configured, I'd like to get this as a public website so that I can send various people to there. We see that publishing is in progress. So that's the part where making a live demo is super dangerous. Uh, hopefully we can get there. I hope you see my, uh, my, my other tab there. So here I'm on the no public website. I didn't have to put any login and password. Uh, we just put a URL at blue square there. We see this information I configured, the logo, the title, the information, the partner there, and some links, but more, more importantly, I want to see, hey, what about the data? Let's click there. I didn't make much configuration, but already I can see on the left, a big empty space. We're going to fill that in a minute, literally. On the right, we see a map. We've already some information. This is our INC one coverage part where we see the various values. And we can already have a look and possibly get deeper and deeper in the structure. This is again using all the shapes and information coming from the pyramid. DataVis has no information in itself. And at the lowest level, I can see individual health center and possibly some that are outside of the boundaries because we know proper mapping is really complicated. I can switch from the coverage to see the groups. Here I can see that I have four MCHP and two clinics in this specific area. I don't maybe that if I go back up, I can see more different type of facilities there. So all in good, I have a basic portal, but it's already showing some interesting information. Let's get into the meat of this. I can add any data I want to show on my portal on using different representation. For example, key indicators. That's really similar to the big numbers you see on the dashboard uh, of the HS2 day. What we call here is a data source is I want to get data from anything inside the HS2. For example, from an indicator group. I know there is one about ANC and I made my portal all about antenatal care. So okay, this was supposed to get the name of the, let me have a look there because I know what's happened once in a while is that I'm getting out of the DHS2 portal. Okay, that's me being log logging out very fast. Okay, and obviously it's time. If, if I'm not logging anymore, it's difficult to make modification. This should be much better now. 
Uh, so, okay, I said, okay, I want to do something there. So I'm, I'm back exactly what I wanted did. I want a key indicator. I want to display the last available value because I know that not all value are always available for each period. And I'm going to get my indicator group, which was the ENC one. Okay, it's there, save. Well, I'll add a... two... Sorry? Two minutes. Two minutes, okay, already. Let's try to, to make that one. Very fast for the last one. So I want number bar chart, that's very good. I want the data source, which is the data element group of ANC, which contain the actual values of this one and not the coverage. I save, I can publish again. That's the time where it's going to be interesting because I have two minutes for my publish remaining. Oh, I can add a new section if I have time. So. Uh, and so publishing is starting. We can see actually how well it's working there. I'm going to get back to my main portal. And I'm going to see that data is already incoming. Oof, that was quick enough. So we see now that we have the key indicator. That's actually all the indicator that were in the group I selected. We see also that I have the various ANC visit, one, two, three, uh, there. This is for the whole country. Again, I can decide to go down and see now the result only on the Bomali region, or going even down, seeing all the results from all the various individual facilities inside uh, this specific region. So this is what database is, a way to decide from the HS2 what part of data you want to make available to everyone. If you are interested to the detail, uh, you can have a look by yourself. It's actually available on the Play 233. Portal is at the URL that I put there. Any questions are most than welcome in the community of practice or to my email. Thanks a lot for your attention. Perfect timing. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was exactly on time at eight minutes. All right, I will turn it over now to our next presenter, who is uh, Roman from uh, JSI. Roman, are you there? Yes, I am. Right. So, um, can you see my screen? I can, yes. The presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, yep, what is it? Good. Yeah, okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Romain Rolando Uri. Um, I started my journey to DHS2 implementation with a Sierra Leone implementation in 2006. And when you done a lot of implementation, um, you start to think of uh, the data use as a dream. I mean, you always ask yourself to see is, uh, is ever, Will will us uh, reach? Will it be possible for us to reach a, one day a point where people at the facility and decentralized level really actually use data for make decision? Well, um, we we realize that uh, um, DHS two has made a lot of um, progress so far. Well, at the beginning, all everything was on paper based and. DHIS2 uh, during the last decade has revolutionized the way of the data is collected, transmitted, and analyzed um, at the country level and move everything to digital. Um, and this was done using a generic approach to, approach to address uh, most use cases. Um, now in all these um, um, country developing countries, um, we have now the very nice data repositories with impressive dashboards that are moving from fairly complex to very complex in terms of uh, in, in terms of data that is presented. But uh, the question that uh, we you ask yourself when you you have been on the field for a long time is that uh, who is actually using that data and for what purpose? Um, is there most of the time the NGOs, the RHIS department at the MOH uh, or the health programs? And uh, uh, usually you, when you go a little bit lower, you, you, you start to, to, to see the district level staff, uh, the facility staff and the community staff. And, and you start asking yourself, are they really using the, this data that is produced by DHIS2? And even lower at the community level, is there any way for, to, to have them use the data to make some informed decisions? And if uh, you were to bring that data to them, um, is this, are they able and equipped to, to, to deal with these complex figures and graphs that we have there? 
can, can they make sense to them? Okay. So what we decided to do is to, uh, to, to add the next mile, the next step to, to the, what DHIS2 has done so far. So moving from the, the server to the palm of the hand, that's the way I say it. So moving from generic to, to specific. So um, we, we try to base the work that we are doing on, on from um, our past experience. We, we've done a lot of PRISM assessment. Uh, I don't know if you know PRISM, but I mean, it's a um, uh, routine information system assessment uh, at the country level. And it has a, a tool that is called OBAT. It's a specific tool that assess the, the capacity of the health staff to do some analysis uh, and, and do some um, small exercises to actually assess their capacity in terms of doing something. And usually when we ask us them to, to draw a simple graph using raw figures, we, 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 we find that uh, there is a lot, it's very challenging for them. And we also notice that in terms of infrastructure, um, there is a challenge usually in, in, in these countries because internet is, is sometimes a luxury, uh, electricity is not something that is always available. And, but uh, fortunately we, we are seeing more and more people using smartphones and having smart, access to smartphones. So uh, the question that we ask ourselves is what if we could identify a key set of indicators, represent them in the simplest, um, simplest useful manner and put that in, in, in a mobile device and put that mobile device in the end of a, of a frontline health workers. We, we, could this help improve uh, health outcomes and decision and, and, and make sure that uh, the, the health of the population improves? So yeah, to, 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 to check and, and make sure that if that is a reality, we, we decided to take an approach by developing um, a two set of app. Um, first, uh, a, a dashboard, the malaria. We are working in a specific area of malaria. So we develop a, a web app that is uh, the, uh, presenting a set of dashboard for malaria and a set of scorecard for malaria. And those uh, we use, um, those apps are installable on DHS 2, 230 and onward and using ReactGS and Angular, open source license. And um, um, we, we, we've brought, bring together uh, um, MNE team that are very uh, skilled in, in malaria and have them work on the set of malaria to come up with a very simple set that will be very useful to decentralized user to be able to, uh, to use data for informed decision. And uh, uh, we, that tool, once you configure it, will ge automatically generate a dashboard or, or a scorecard specific uh, to malaria, helping you to take the decision at decentralized level. Uh, and uh, we, for each of the app, we created a counterpart app, counterpart app that is a Android, uh, that is an app that can be installed on Android or iOS, also like uh, open source and can manage, can can use, um, can manage multiple users or multiple servers, and support offline and have the functionality of uh, of sharing uh, the data. Uh, using a social network feature that you can find on the phone. You can install any app on your phone that and, and share the data with that. Uh, I like and the it's, yeah, it brings you a full set of dashboard on mobile and scorecard. So here I'm presenting some screenshots. You, as normal, you can access the app. This is the configuration screen um, that you have. You, where you can match your uh, the, the set of indicator that you presented with what uh, uh, you have in your DHS2. Then you select the period, the org unit, and boom, you have your dashboard. We have all you and each of the graphs you can download them. And this is a counterpart uh, mobile app that uh, uh, gives you um, where you can download the app and have a dashboard on a mobile phone. You can share. The, the data and it can also work offline. The same for the scorecard, you have a web version where you can do the configuration, set your targets, and then um, it's you select the organic that you want and boom, 
you have your dashboard that is already predefined per level that you can use. And in the counterpart app, you also have uh, the, uh, the mobile where you can select what you want and have your scorecard design on your mobile phone and you can now share it also on social media. Now we are currently testing this, uh, these apps in Madagascar and Cote d'Ivoire to validate the pertinence of this approach. Now, uh, uh, imagine if uh, we can, um, this approach is validated and we can extend this uh, uh, work to over health program. That will be uh, what it, it will open a lot of uh, uh, possibilities in terms of data use. Thank you. And this is uh, quickly uh, the team that is working on, on, on this work. And I want to acknowledge their effort and say thank you to all of them. And thank you to you for listening to us. Over. Perfect timing as well. Thank you, Roman. Great presentation. Um, just very quickly, we will turn it over to our third and final presenter for the web app category. This is Stephen Okaya from HIPS Uganda. Stephen, are you there? Yep. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. Let me just um, Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Steven Ochaya. I work with HISP Uganda. I'm going to present uh, quickly um, a web portal uh, pla a platform that, we, that runs on, on WordPress, a uh, content management system. Uh, as a background, uh, we know that access to DHS through data currently requires authentication. And just like uh, Scott said, highlighted some, some minutes ago, um, without authentication, access to data becomes a big challenge. So we're looking at a situation where uh, we want people to get some few data uh, out there without necessarily logging in. And we've seen that the only solution that can best work at the moment is to uh, probably integrate DHIS2 data within a WordPress uh, website. Uh, website. And um, so the DHIS2 analytics uh, platform was developed to extend the functionality of a WordPress powered website to display DHIS2 dashboard um, and, and give data freely to, uh, to the public. And this was developed uh, by his Uganda with support from Catholic Relief Services of Mali and also Logical Outcome and his South Africa. So uh, the key features uh, of the app is just, um, we, we, we wanted the platform to have simple and intuitive UI, uh, simplified and intuitive user interface without the need of any programming for the end users out there and configurable UI and also multiple block options within the web and uh, website. Uh, this comes with the inbuilt uh, default uh, block editor of, of, of WordPress and allows you to add any content of, from DHIS to dashboard within uh, the, web, and, and, and the website. And these are the target audience. We're looking largely for the Ministry of Health, but also to the rest of the other uh, players who might want to pull some data from DHIS2. We're looking at implementing partners. We're looking at NGOs. We're looking at funding agencies. We're looking at content managers, those who are doing consultancies. And, and also we're looking at education and other departments that probably are implementing these days DHIS2 data. And uh, the main thing is about uh, them displaying data on the, on, on the public uh, our website. What you see is my WordPress uh, uh, powered site. If I'm to log in, um, uh, just quickly. So you can see I'm, I'm going to the back end of the WordPress. I'm not going to do any programming, but just to do some basic configuration. Uh, when I go to plugin, uh, you'll see um, I have DHS2 analytics already. I've configured it. I've already activated it within the WordPress site. And once I've activated it, uh, it, it creates a many option where I, I configure basic information about the DHS2 that I want. Right now, I'm going to point to the Play Store uh, of, of DHS2. And uh, I've already put the password and I also put compatibility. Uh, this plugin runs from 2.29 up to the current version of, of DHS2. But once uh, we are aware that there was a, a great change of API for 2.29, so that's why we separated the two so that at least uh, the, the plugin can, can handle the request accordingly. 
right now we know that this is 2.3 uh, 4.1 so without saving I'm, I'm i'm going to leave as is i go to um, my pages i can create just like any um so this is my dashboard on the play store but one thing uh, that we know i want to display this um, content within my wordpress site and uh, all i need to do is go to go to the wordpress site i can do on a post as an administrator i can create a new one or just edit one for now so uh, we saw at the beginning that we had one item the graph and uh, all this uh, plugin does is allows you to add as multiple among the uh, block options that you can add in Gutenberg and, and WordPress, we've added a DHIS2 um, block that you can add. And you can add alongside the other content that you, you, you want. So you can also delete and start afresh. So let's delete this and create our new. So this is, I'm going to say uh, demonstration or the app competition. This is going to be my post. Okay. And then here, I'm going to add the content. So this pulls all our dashboards, the word, what you see up here, gives us access to all the dashboard within the DHI students that we have configured. And as you can see, you can go into each of the dashboard and get the dashboard items as and when you want. And uh, we have display options on the right hand side, as you can see. One of the options is that you can display one item at a time. So I can decide to just pull uh, maybe, uh, let's say one like that um coverage and then just update and uh, this will give us already you can also preview as you as you as you design you can see the uh, the chart has started coming but also you can come and say i want multiple items now when you say multiple items it gives you two options you either want uh, to make it in a, in a slideshow mode or grid display grid display aligns items along each other or, or, or you can get a uh, slideshow. Then slideshow, since it's multiple, you are allowed to uh, select as many as possible, but also comes with, comes with other options. You can shuffle the order of the item, you can enable captions. This gives some brief description of each of the items that comes in the DHIS2 uh, dashboard item, or you can enable, you can disable it. And then, so this is slideshow. If I update and, and I come to my demo, to my preview, you'll see that this content changes from uh, the single item to a slider. You can note it from here. And this is, is pretty uh, what we intend to have, as you can see. So that is a slideshow. But also, um, there are other options that you can try to customize the size. If you feel that is not, so maybe you can say this is 650 Two minutes pixels minutes. The height for the slider. And then you update, you will note that probably um, this should be able to change. You can see the height has increased. Now that is the way it, uh, then the other option, if I want grid display, I can come, uh, we could do full, full size. And then how many items do you want on a row? I can say three or four, okay. Depending on what you have, you want to shuffle or not, or you want to enable captions, if it is yes. Let me remove captions and then, uh, Remember, I've selected everything. And uh, so when I reload this, you see my contents are going to start changing the way it's displaying, the basing on what, what we have, and they're loading from the DHIS2 without any side. And you can, you can easily remove what you don't want or what you like and the like. Then uh, you can go down, probably below, and add other contents of a WordPress. Uh, maybe you can say uh, this was just demo, 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 okay? Then below it, you can decide to add no more WordPress content. Uh, let's, let's add a table. And from our table, I want two columns and one row. Uh, I want maybe three columns. I create a table. And in the table, I'm going to add probably uh, my one content. And you can see at the, at the beginning, the icon shows what type of item it is. 
Uh, this is a free text description. This is a, a chart. This is a map. The note also tables are shown. So if I want uh, this item and a single item, uh, so I come and pick one item, it's going to, so that depends on how you want to make your content uh, showing up. So you can see the content has already started showing here one. We have just edited that same item, but um, if I want to add below, you can also add as many as possible. And so the basic concept is that you can set up your, uh, your, your web portal using the data that's come from data without modifying it, but rather uh, using what has already been uh, preloaded from DHIS2. We're using the, uh, the inbuilt um, um, API uh, that is used for dashboard. And we're, we're utilizing that to make sure that uh, the WordPress is able to display uh, the content as and when it's necessary. So uh, just- system. So if you wanna just wrap up very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So basically uh, you can, so because of time, I cannot uh, just configure much, but you also see that we have other options uh, that uh, you can configure. Um, when you shuffle, when you don't shuffle items, it will display them in that order. But also one important thing is that I can also display links. The, the, uh, the links are there. These are, are resources that are within DHIS2. So if I do multiple. Um, Sorry, Stephen, we're gonna have to that? wrap you up. Just, okay. yeah, the, the time is okay. up. But this, is, this is really, really impressive. So thank you very much for sharing. Okay, okay. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, I don't envy the, uh, the people who have to vote. Luckily, I don't have to vote because these are all very good uh, presentations and, and applications. Um, I will now uh, turn it over to our Android app uh, competitors uh, or finalists. And we have three of them as well. Uh, first up, uh, this is a web app. First up for the Android app, we have eRegistry MATLAB by Monjour. If you are ready, Monjour. Are you there, Monjour? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Well, and uh, you can see my screen, right? I cannot see your screen yet. There we go. Can you? Yes. All right. Whenever right. you're ready. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present in front of you. I, I will present uh, our EDSG initiative app, uh, which is designed to implement a re health project uh, based on the pregnancy, childbirth, and uh, vaccination. The study site is in MATLAB, uh, Bangladesh. And uh, this app is targeted to use by community health worker who are responsible for pregnancy identification uh, pregnancy data collection and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the primary primary care services for pregnant women. And uh, we we developed this app on the top of the DHS2 skeleton app uh, provided by Android team UIO. And uh, uh, I'll use uh, two screen to show you uh, to show the demo. One is uh, the with the black border. Uh, that is uh, my emulator screen, and another is. Uh, uh, live tablet uh, just behind me. Uh, this is the one, yeah, with the white border. Okay. Okay. Uh, after login, the user have to select uh, the. Uh, by the way, we have two programs uh, to to uh, uh, deploy the the uh, to achieve the project goal here. Uh, one is uh, one program is client register who that is uh, storing uh, the lifetime event like TT vaccination and the other one MCH program that is uh, used for storing uh, pregnancy identification information ANC and uh, postpartum care information. 
But uh, we build this way. User have to select uh, the client register program first, and then select uh, the uh, the next uh, program. So I'm showing you uh, the on the emulator the client program, and it will uh, direct you to the available uh, participants you have in the screen, and. Uh, uh, and and this uh, this card has uh, uh, some options like uh, on the on the image icon. If you click, it will uh, direct you to the detail attribute page where you can change the the attribute names uh, here. Uh, we uh, we did a couple of things in the in this app. We we uh, designed uh, like uh, the Android Capture have the is control type, and the program rules uh, uh, are going smoothly in this uh, application and or the new SDK. So uh, and. And uh, to to find or, or an old case or an enroll new one, user have to uh, go through a external uh, an external biometric authentication app uh, that is a, a palm based authentication app. I'm I'm showing you uh, live. Uh, I'm using uh, the the tablet screen now. Yeah. Uh, from the um, and so by the way, by the way, it's in uh, Bengali, uh, so I'll I'll translate it. I'll click on uh, this icon, uh, the, the hand icon, to open the external app. It is opening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I am registered here as a demo a demo participant and named uh, test web. And yeah, I'm I'm searching myself. Okay, and uh, then I'll click on use this to uh, to to copy the random ID generated uh, in the background by the app. Uh, this is one. Uh, okay, I'm clipping this, and uh, and uh, when I returning to the screen, to the app screen, it will uh, copy it over the number, copy it over, and I'll search it by here by clicking here, tapping here, and it is showing that uh, it's in the Bengali. It's uh, no one is found there. Then I'll enroll the uh, the new participants uh, with this ID. I'll click on the enroll button over here, and it will copy. Then I'll put uh, uh, the name, test uh, wife, next, and the phone number, four six four six next, and uh, yeah. There are two arrows, uh, so and uh, the program rules is working. So I have to put another digit here to to go through. And yes, one is going there, one is over, and I'm putting year 23, and it is generated the uh, date exactly. And then test uh, husband. Yep, and then delays. Okay, blah blah, and a bar name. Uh, this is sufficient for registering a, a pregnant woman in the in the in the in the program. Yep, uh, uh, and and for for an unseen the even um, track identity instance, you will see a, a delete button there. You can delete there uh, if it is an accidental input. Uh, uh, by the uh, anyway, it it real uh, rarely rarely occur. However, it can be deleted uh, from the local without syncing. Uh, I'm deleting that. Uh, as uh, I'll show in the other screen. So I, I deleted it, I, yes, it is gone. Okay, I'm going back to the other screen, the emulator one. Okay, here I, one I created already uh, before uh, to shorten the presentation. The I'll, uh, If I go to uh, the, if I click on the on the main body here, it will direct me to the program is just uh, instance space. Okay, yeah, here we go. And uh, here we can uh, select the uh, switch back to the uh, switch back and forth uh, or select the programs. Yeah, and uh, if it is for the first time, it will uh, ask me whether I want to enroll in the new program or MCS program. Yeah, if I click yes, it will direct me to the program instances, uh, program instance page of that program. Then uh, I'll, I'll select, uh, sorry, someone. You have two minutes. Okay, all right. All right, so I'm selecting a, I'm selecting a, a LMP date here, okay, and it will uh, calculate the calculate the gestational age, and I'm selecting some uh, predetermined data accordingly. Yes, 
yes and yeah by the way this is the the this is the organic type uh, organic type data uh, uh, type organic data uh, uh, control type yeah we have implemented here for this uh, project all right uh, by the way this is uh, wrong and uh, yeah profile uh, is after some program rules are going on there uh, so I, and uh, i am clicking here to complete all right and yeah that's it that's the that's the you know our our goal for you know uh, uh, in the in the project that uh, community health worker capturing the pregnancy information on on spot by visiting the house to house and also also we are generating the pregnancy list who are uh, touched with sub gestation so that they can contact them directly to encourage them uh, to have a facility delivery uh, there yeah their this current pregnancy and uh, it will uh, list sh show you the list and our future plan is to implement uh, the dashboards, uh, a, a portion of dashboard like uh, table and charts. So now uh, we are using an interactive dashboard and uh, switching back to uh, two apps is uh, cumbersome for the user. And our users are not so tech savvy. So, and it is really troublesome for them. So the, we are implement, we are plan, our plan is to implement uh, uh, some of them. And by by uh, achieving uh, for achieving this, we are, we have implemented a couple of custom services in the new SDK, uh, uh, and uh, we are doing that. Yeah, hopefully we'll show in the next year again. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you very much. Great time. Great timing as well. Um, really appreciate that. Great great presentation. Next up, we have Telemedico from uh, presented by Adriano. Are you are you able to join us? Yeah, I see you just on yes. mute. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Sure. Yes, uh, let me quickly jump and uh, and share my screen. Okay, my name is Adrian. I'm from IT Nordic Zimbabwe. I'm working on a smart telemedicine application with DHS2 and IoT integration. So basically we are using uh, embedded devices to monitor and track patients uh, that are chronically ill, the elderly, and it can also be used in the case of uh, COVID-19 so that uh, doctors may not uh, go and frequently visit uh, the, the, the patients in their ICUs or in their homes. So they can actually monitor the, the vitals like uh, temperature and, uh, and, and pulse rate remotely and data will be automatically uh, synced to the DHS2 server. Yes, yeah, so we are trying to, to eliminate the problem of data of manual data entry using sensors and uh, that, that will send data uh, in, uh, automatically in real time to the DHS2 server and the data will be uh, displayed onto the mobile device. Yes, moving on to the statistics. These are the statistics of, of uh, of the potential deaths and the deaths that have been recorded um, over time. And 79% of these cases are coming from developing countries. So that, that's where our interest is. So that we can actually try to, 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 to alleviate uh, the deaths from uh, chronic diseases. So the solution that we've come up with is uh, developing a mobile, device, a mobile application or an Android application uh, that uses um, embedded devices so in this case, we are using uh, an LM35 temperature sensor and a heart rate sensor. And in the future, we're planning to use um, uh, seizure detectors, motion sensors to, uh, to, to, to cater for patients with, uh, with uh, epilepsy. So in this case, we are using embedded systems. We are using Internet of Things, which are the microcontrollers. Uh, and we are using DHS2 API. We are using the DHS2 API to, to send the payload from, a, from an embedded device into the, in the, into the DH2, DHS2 um, server. And we have a mobile device uh, that sends our real time notifications if the patient's uh, condition has become critical. So, jumping on to the, to the, to the architecture of the system, uh, this is uh, the basic architecture of the system. Uh, we have a temperature sensor, at risk sensor. And a motion sensor, but in this in this case we are using only two sensors that we have uh, uh, we have chosen to, to to model this system. So this data is getting into a microcontroller, 
and we have a we have a Wi-Fi module and a DHS2 API that is uh, uh, that is being used to send uh, data onto the DHS2 database, and uh, later the data or in real time the data will be will be retrieved onto the mobile device. So these are the hardware components. This is a cross section of uh, of the of, uh, of the of the of the wearable that is on the right, and this is the cross section of uh, of it. This is the, the basic hardware architecture of that. So this is the LM35 temperature sensor that I'm using to 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 model the the, the system, and this is the, the the heart rate sensor. So if you can allow me, I can just uh, jump and uh, try to reshape so that uh, you can actually see the readings onto the mobile device. Uh, let me quickly do that. Yeah, so this is the, the, the telemedical application that is using the DHS2 API. Uh, let me quickly log in. Yes. So as you can see, we're taking data from this uh, from this uh, wearable device or a bracelet, and uh, we are now displaying it. Uh, we are now displaying it onto the onto this uh, mobile device, and this application can actually show you uh, the data elements that we are we are uh, actually working on. In this case, we are using pulse and temperature, and in the future, we are planning to add more. And as well, in this case, we have actually uh, recorded the patient from one org unit, which is the, the, the main that we are starting from, which is Arara, the capital seat. Um, and also the programs that we have enrolled, that the, the patient is enrolled to. So in, in this case, the patient is enrolled to a program called uh, telemedicine. Um, so the system, is, the, the system is actually built in three parts. So there's an embedded uh, device part, which is or the IoT part, which is built, which is written in C, and the mobile application that we wrote in Java. So we can actually, I can actually try and reshape as well, so that I can see you, I can show the the payload that I'm sending uh, to the DHS2 server through a track through through a tracker program. Um, let me quickly go there. Yes. So if I go into the serial monitor, this is um, this is my, my my C program. Yes. So if I can quickly go to the serial monitor, I hope you can see it. So these are the readings of this is for the pulse and this is for the for the for the LM thirty five temperature. So we can actually see if the if if the if the if the condition of the patient becomes critical, the doctor or any healthcare provider can actually go. And, uh, and, and give uh, attention to that patient who's got a, a, a critical condition so that we, re we reduce a uh, death rate as recorded by the, the, the who.int uh, website. And it's actually rapidly increasing. So that's what, that's what we are trying to, uh, to reduce. So this is the payload. That's how data is being sent into DHS2. As you can see, this is a program. This is a trigger program, an event payload that is being sent to DHS2. And this is my, my URL that is pointing to uh, the DHS to, uh, let me quickly scroll up. Yes, um, I'm, I'm connected to this server, as you can see, it's called uh, dev.it.africa. So if I can uh, go into the web browser and actually quickly uh, show you how things are going. So if I say, um, let's say dev.it.africa. So this is the server that I'm, that I'm, that I'm the cloud server that I'm using, that I'm using to host um, this application. Uh, and this is the API that I'm, that I'm using to achieve data. As you can see, this is the 75 bits per minute that I, that I was recording on, on the mobile, that was retrieved on the mobile, on the mobile device. And uh, this is uh, 34.03 that I recorded, that I recorded uh, on myself this morning. 
So uh, this is the DHIS2 API that I'm using, that I'm, uh, that I'm hosting on this, uh, on this particular server. So back to the presentation. Yes, so the idea here is um, we no longer need to, to, to manually enter data. Data is being recorded about um, a particular a, a patient in question. So we are also planning to, to use um, the, uh, the GPS or the GPRS tracker embedded into that device as well, so that when a, when a, when a critical condition arises, uh, it will actually detect and show location where the patient is. So as you can see from the architecture, there's a GPRS. So in this case, we're just sending data directly into, directly into, into the DHS2 server and then retrieve it on the mobile. But we are planning to, to, to embed into this wearable and then uh, record data uh, as well as a location data will be embedded into that device. So the, patient, uh, the patients are going to be given these, uh, these, these wearables. Uh, the patient in question, if the patient is sick and they go and their, 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 their temperature or their heart rate is not good and they do not want to have a stay at the hospital, they will just get this, uh, this device and uh, they will go, they will, ju they will just get uh, care from, from their homes in the comfort of their homes. So in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to reduce uh, the, con the conduct of COVID-19 so that we can actually monitor the patients when they are away. So Edward, your time is up, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully you can wrap it up very quickly. Okay, uh, thank you. So the app is on the store, it's there. And then- um, You can share the, that also the... in the community of practice if you'd like after Sorry? this. You can also right. share this in the community of practice after this. Thank you okay. very much for, for your presentation. I'm sorry okay, I have to cut you off because we're running short on time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have one final presentation um, for the Android category. This one is, um, again, Stephen Okaya from HISP Uganda, who also submitted an Android application um, called Travel Check. So I will turn it over now to uh, Stephen for uh, the last presentation before the voting. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, can I use uh, my mobile phone instead? Um, I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Aaron? Yeah, I'm just adding your other uh, account as panelist now. Got it. Okay, you should be also. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, so, uh, quickly, I'm going to present. Uh, Can you see my screen? Hello? Adrian, Adrian would you mind unsharing your screen? Do you, yeah. Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? We can't see your screen yet, Stephen. Okay. Uh, so uh, quickly, just as a background, um, Uganda, uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, on the 18th of March, locked uh, down the country um, and the allowed only truck drivers to cross the country from the neighboring uh, countries or into Uganda. And um, one of the things that came through was that these truck drivers and the crew members were supposed to be uh, thoroughly tested at the border, but also monitored along their route in the country. And one thing that became eminent was that uh, there was need to track these drivers across their timelines, their, their timelines uh, through, uh, throughout the country by establishing national in-country checkpoints. Uh, and this is important, especially when they become uh, positive um, they would need to be tracked down and taken into quarantine and also for into the treatment centers. Uh, so the other thing that came out was that uh, most of these drivers who were returning through um, already had the, some 
basic document that was already given to them during their first visit or their, uh, their first uh, en encounters at the borders. What you see on the left is a 60 kilometer um, uh, distance of waiting. Stephen, we can't see your screen, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just see if I can share again. Let me see, uh, share. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing your screen still. I'm trying to connect. Uh, sorry, just a moment. Okay. Um, can you see now? Still no, unfortunately. Oh, yes, now something is starting. Okay, that's done? Good. Yeah. So um, let me just fire up the presentation again. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. I think, I think we're good. So uh, what you can see here is a 60 kilometer on the left, 60 kilometers of uh, trucks waiting at the border to be processed at the border. And yet these drivers already had some basic documents that were given to them uh, with the QR, with all the details that uh, needed to be captured at the border. So what uh, this app was meant to do was to quickly reduce that long queue uh, by just scanning the documents that, we, that they have and allow quick, entries into the system, into the HIS2 system. Uh, so um, we, we came out with the travel check app. Um, that gives us some basic uh, features. Uh, one is the secure QR uh, scanner uh, that only, the, only is able to scan that travel pass that is generated from um, another app that was meant that, that runs on DHIS2, but also automatic submission of in country checkpoints with precise locations and time so that once the driver turns positive, they can easily know where to start looking for the driver and, uh, and the truck, but also allows configurable uh, checkpoints, stops as per process flow, returning travelers for those who are returning, and entry points for the new uh, travelers in country, um, in laboratories, clearance. That is at the border when you're now finally allowed to enter in the country, but also at exit so that we know that you have crossed the country and we stop tracking you from there. Uh, so the app gives an intelligent uh, DHIS2 integration from UI, from the interface, by, by allowing you to configure the apps uh, just quickly, um, the URL and the, and, and the authentications of the DHIS2, but also give you a mapping of uh, the basic uh, program details that is required for submission of an event but also and, 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 and the other data. So what you see, um, are this, these are the various screens that are there, but I, I just want to quickly run to the app. So I have installed one. So here, quickly, uh, what you can see is just uh, the app and, and the interface. The first gives you just where you can scan the QR code. Once you scan the QR code, it automatically processes the form and, uh, and run through and gives you a list in here. But also this is the most interesting bit, allows you to configure uh, a checkpoint. So let me just create a quick checkpoint. Let's call it um, DST uh, 2020. Uh, then this is going to be an in-country checkpoint. Uh, then I save. This becomes my active uh, checkpoint that I'm going to use on this phone. And, but also when I look at the DHIS2 side, I already configured an instance uh, that is already uh, going to be receiving the data uh, from, from that. Uh, but in, interestingly, you can also look at uh, the various uh, program uh, mapping. The program is called eCOVID-19 screening form. The org unit is the test org unit and the program stage is traveler locator. This allows us to easily know at what point the driver was seen where at what time. So, um, and, and th that is my current mapping. So I have uh, a document uh, that I want to scan. So I can 
So as you can see, it quickly scans through. And then, so now this is just going to give me uh, the details. I, I, this is the content that I've set up. I, when I submit, it will submit this information into DHIS2 and then allows me to uh, easily find am I online, not submitted, let me. Okay, so once you've submitted the document, then it will, now you can see that the, the two uh, tick has, has changed, uh, meaning that the data has gone into DHIS2. And when I go into uh, my DHIS2 uh, program, the tracker program, so this is the travel pass generator. It has a list of uh, people that are coming in that are registered at border points, but also um, specifically I can find out um, the person. But when I go to the program itself, uh, the program tracker capture, sorry, I've logged out. Let me log in quickly. I have to give you uh, one minute, Stephen. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just want to show that the event has come through. Um, so when I come to travel, uh, tracker, tracker capture. Okay, quickly, uh, just look for test, test of unit, yes. So once I come this side and I pick the program, Sorry, it's not loading here. I know that's... So I pick the program. This is investigation. I should be able to see uh, the record that are attached there. Sorry, the mobile uh, phone is a bit uh, slow to load. Let me see. Okay, finally it has come. So uh, you see the record that has come through. Uh, I pick this record. And um, what happens is that when I come to this uh, travel locator, I should be able to have uh, my program stage for this travel locator. Is it the right record? Uh, I need to find out which one is this. I have many uh, records that are there, so I need to find the exact method. Uh, we're, we're unfortunately just about out of time again. Apologies. So, uh, okay, just quickly. So what, what this app does is does it, it adds this um, as, a, as an event to show the coordinates and the time and, and the precise location where uh, the driver was last seen. But also for the returning travelers, it, it automatically captures the whole form uh, that is captured at the border points without necessarily uh, collecting uh, data afresh from the, from the drivers and the crew members. Uh, these are all the data that are collected from the form, as you can see, uh, but this is just a few of them that was uh, formatted, but they have other information that are there that the app automatically already reads from what was already um, entered into the system. Thank you. I'm sorry for the, uh, I think the presentation, I think the app, the, the mobile view is not very clear. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, with oh, that, we will we'll turn it over to the voting. So you have a very tough job ahead of you, everyone. Uh, I think Caroline will share her screen quickly so that we can uh, get the voting uh, started. And you have to pick one web app and one Android app from the, the three of each that you have just seen. Uh, thank you all to all of our finalists again. And Caroline, Caroline, if you want to share your screen, there we go. Perfect. Yes. Uh, you Go ahead and, and uh, take it away, Carol. Yes, so we will be using, uh, I hope you can hear me. Yep. Okay, uh, we will be using uh, Mentimeter. So please go to menti.com and use the code 2463061. So the results are hidden. So don't worry, uh, no one is gonna see who's in the lead or, 
or stuff like that. And uh, you can also it'll move on to the Android app after you voted for the web app and you can only vote for one. So we'll give you a bit of time uh, to vote and uh, then I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll send the results to uh, Austin so he can be the bearer of good news. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I think Jose volunteered to play some guitar for the next uh, minute and a half or two minutes while we, uh, <laughs> while we wait for this. But uh, please go to menti.com and enter the code at the top of the screen there and, uh, and vote for your favorite, uh, <laughs> favorite web app and then your favorite Android app. Uh, and we will have winners in just one minute. And you can see my assistant, Sleeping Beauty, right here on my side. She's not too excited about the voting, but... <laughs> Okay, so we have a hundred votes. Um, we are about 200 in the session, but uh, in the interest of time, I guess I can stop sharing soon or? Or maybe give it 15 seconds. Yeah. So hurry up and vote, everyone. Carolina, you're getting. Hmm? You're getting some more requests for music here. <laughs> requests for music. <laughs> uh, I had something. Yeah, I heard something in the background. <laughs> okay, we're at 113, but it's kind of stagnated a bit. But please, yeah, okay. There is some more. So hopefully most of you have the link uh, at least. <laughs> I should have picked something a little bit less ambient. <laughs> we are already a bit over time for the session. So maybe we just yep. need to cut down. We can do okay. 10 seconds and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing and then share the results with Austin. Thank you. You want to vote? Huh? And we have the results coming in now. Yeah, I sent them to you on Slack, Austin. Thank you. We have a 
close call here. Yeah, give me a second. Apologies, everyone. The, the suspense is probably killing you. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like we have, uh, we actually have a double winner, surprisingly. So we have uh, both, both of the entries for web apps and for Android uh, of, by HISP Uganda um, were the, the popular, most popular choice. Um, so Stephen Okaya and HISP Uganda for their WordPress plugin, as well as the travel check application. Um, however, uh, we're, we want to give uh, two prizes, so we'll actually be giving it to the, the, the application, uh, Stephen as well, and Hispiganda, of course, uh, and then the second place for the Android category was Telemedico from Adriano, Ad Adrian, apologies. And so that will uh, be the two winners of our, of our app competition this year. Um, congratulations again to all of our finalists. If you have any follow-up questions for any of those uh, finalists or uh, want to learn more about uh, app development and, and extending DHIS2, you can uh, find us on the community of practice, including all of the developers of those applications. And also follow us at developers.dhis2.org to learn more about how to build your own applications. Um, that was a really great presentation from all of our finalists. Thank you all again. And uh, I think with that, we will close this session and turn it over to the closing, closing remarks for the, uh, the annual conference of DHS2. Thank you all very much. And congratulations.